Let's have so much fun gluing fabric and making one amazing fabric notepad cover. <laughs> yes, yes, that's cartonage and I'm Claudia, the cartonage designer and teacher from Colory Arts and I'm here today to share with you lots of tips and tricks of how to glue fabric the best way, you know, having a great finishing at the end and you know making this so functional project that you can use for yourself uh, and more it can be a wonderful handmade gift and the way i'm sharing with you today you see that you have many possibilities so you can make it the way you prefer and use to you know to attend your needs so that's the part that i really also love in cartonage uh, and by the way, cartonage, the technique that I'm sharing today, it's uh, the art of box making, <laughs> okay? So we work with cardboard, fabric, and glue and create lots of fabric projects, but not only boxes. As I'm doing today in this video, we're gonna make a cover. So let me share some details of the project we'll be making today, okay? So, well, uh, as I said, in cartonage we work with cardboard and to facilitate the work I have some pre-cut do-it-yourself kits that can help a lot, that can help us a lot. So I have this kit, fabric notepad cover, that is the small one for a long time. It's really a bestseller, everyone loves making, this is one that I made. Uh, actually in our workshop in like two years ago, it's so fantastic. We can here use a small notepad, right? We have a pocket here, we can put in our pen. So it's very functional. Thousands of fabric lovers have made this project so far. And I have a do-it-yourself available for that. And now I came out with a different version. <laughs> okay, so this is the for the big pad. And I also have some differences some uh, different possibilities for the inside. So, so let me share here with you. Okay, so this is the basic, basic version. Like if I would do exactly as the one, uh, the, the small one, I just added a clip to the top. So I can, you know, hold some paper, something that I need here. Look at how beautiful fabric, right? And take a look at how very well done and very well glued. I made this project again, like two years ago. It's wonderful i have been using okay you can see here that i have some things written on so here i have the notepad cover and the other side i have here my pocket i always have lots of papers i don't remove here to make the the video but i really use this for a long time and it is really well still very good and it is durable it is sturdy okay and made with your favorite fabric right so let me share another one that i, that I made recently for uh, designing the kit that we have some changes so take a look at this one again that you can have as i said a notepad in one side and here a pocket so you can put a lot of stuff here your papers your notes and a lot of things that you want to do but then i said okay how about i do a little different so i came out with this one that is actually our do-it-yourself kit that i will share with you in a minute how to make okay so here we have the big one like the cover so in one side i still have my pocket look at how beautiful fabric right so colorful right <laughs> in this snowy winter in michigan they have so many colors here in this studio it's so fantastic so this is the part where i can still put my notepad cover if you want right and on the other side i decided to come up instead of putting my pocket i could but instead of putting the pocket i decided to do something different so here i have i have this bar that can hold all papers that i want and i also can work like for example as a planner I can have a, a papers for planet and it closes with magnet. Isn't that unique? Oh my gosh, I love it so much. So I'll share all the details of this construction construction for you very soon, okay? So when you are starting with a do-it-yourself kit, you have all the pieces already pre-cut in exactly size that you need, you know? And you also have included the big pad and you have the magnet, so everything that you need will be there other than the fabric. The fabric I don't include in any of my kits because it's really your choice. You're gonna put your favorite fabric and have lots of fun gluing and making it very unique. 
okay? So now let's get started and make this project, okay? I hope you like and stay with me out the end because I hope you'll see that gluing fabric is not difficult. And sometimes, you know, I see some videos people or I receive lots of questions and people kind of overcomplicate the process of gluing fabric because it's really more simple than you can imagine. And we have been doing not only myself, but you know, hundreds of members of the Cardinage Club and all my customers from Colorway Arts, we are gluing fabric for a long time and making lots and lots of boxes and covers and so many more things using this thing, this method that I'm, I'm sharing to you today of applying applying glue and gluing fabric in a fun and easy way. Okay, so now let's get started. The materials to make this are, you know, very simple. To get started, you need the do-it-yourself kit with all the pieces already pre-cut, right? But actually, you see here in this video that uh, you can make for any size you want. This project can really be done in any size of chipboard that you want because I don't know your needs for what you're going to use it for, right? So if you want to use for the notepad cover, your pieces of chipboard need to be a little bigger to fit the notepad inside, right? And then your poster boards need to be a little smaller than the chipboard to fit inside, as you're going to see in this video. So there is no actually dimensions needed for that. Uh, but if you really want to start right, especially if you are new to cartonage, I would say start with the do-it-yourself kit because you have all done and you don't need to stress out cutting chipboard. In case you are doing any other kind of project or this project by yourself, I have a video sharing how to cut chipboard, how to mark and have everything straight and neat and how to cut the chipboard safely, okay? So if you are doing everything by yourself, please watch that video. I put the link in the description. So watch that video and uh, just to be safe, <laughs> okay? Good. So more than the do-it-yourself kit, what we need in cartonage or the, the cardboard, right, is our fabrics and glue. Those are the most uh, important, right? Let's say the main things we need. And then other than that, we have some, we need some materials and supplies that we will see here during the video where they are. If you are used to cartonage already, it's just the cartonage tools and the glue. So let me share here the fabric I'm gonna be using today is very unique. I'm using the collection from, uh, Jennifer from Sea Lemon. She has a YouTube channel and she, you know, has does lots of beautiful and crafts and she designed some fabrics. So this is the passion fruit fabric from Sea Lemon and uh, uh, very wonderful. And this is what I'm going to be using today. And then I choose just some another fabric to be coordinating. I really like when I'm doing my projects to have some contrasting fabrics or I usually pick something that it's really going with one of the colors in my main fabric, right? So this is what I'm going to be using today. Uh, she also has other ones and I will be making another one and sharing another time with you the smaller one. Look at this one. It's very pretty as well, right? Okay, so, well, I put the link in the description of this video so you can find her fabrics as well if you want. And about glue, we use glue all from Elmer's, okay? So yes, this is the glue we use. I know some makers do not recommend, but we gonna you we use this for so long in cartonage all over the world and works fantastic. So I would say give it a try and you like it. Okay, so glue all from Elmer's. I always put in another bottle that is easier, you know, to, to use like a ketchup bottle, okay? But it's glue all from Elmer's. Uh, and then we need some tools to a roller paint, paint brush to spread, spread the glue. We need something for fabric, right? So we're gonna need like rotary cut, cutting mat. I need a scrap of a paper so I can apply the glue over. You'll see in a minute. For this specific project, we're gonna use some specific project uh, tools, cartonage tools. So I use my spacer. So we have a set that is acrylic spacers and plastic, plastic spatula. So I'm gonna be using those today. 
And I also will be using the corner tool to have a great corner in my projects and I will share in details how to do it. So we have the long version of the corner tool and we also have the small version of it and uh, you can choose which one you prefer. So here I have the smaller one. So this is the, the long version and the small version, both of them um, to have good corners, okay? During this video, I will explain very well how to use it. Masking tape is very important as well, okay? We really use masking tape a lot in this process of gluing fabric, and I would recommend some heavy books because we need to make this to stay flat during the time that the, dry, the glue is drying, okay? You also need some small pieces of craft paper and uh, a really small piece of ribbon just to have that, you know, pen holder inside the notepad cover, <laughs> okay? Uh, if you are using the magnets, so they are in the do-it-yourself kit, if you are doing by yourself, you can use any disc magnets that you find and you see later in the video. And also like those here, like those um, magnets that are like disc magnets or you can have another shape, whatever you have around. And for the magnets, I really like super glue as well, okay? So those are the things that would be a little different in this. Good, so now that I said all the materials, let's go and uh, start making it, okay? Very good, so excited, let's get started. And for that, we need the two pieces. Let's share my table already and let's get started. So here you go, we have the two pieces number one, that are the big pieces for the uh, notepad that what I said about you can do this any size you want is because really let me pick the notepad here so I can share you so let's see take a look here it's just a little bigger than the notepad of course you want this notepad to fit inside okay so it's completely up to you okay so pieces number one and now you need one of the pieces if you are using the 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 kit you're gonna receive three pieces of craft paper inside right so now you have two big ones and one smaller now you you need one of the big ones okay and now the craft paper now is gonna be used to put those pieces together so let's go and start making it right very good so this is piece number one we're gonna start putting both pieces together to create our cover so now we're going to spread the glue right here on the long edge of piece number one, okay? And you can spread this with your brush or with your roller paint, whatever you want. I just want to spread like a, like maybe a half an inch or three quarters wide of glue right there. And then you just glue the, cup, the craft paper right over, okay? It's, if you are cutting this by yourself, just a reminder, this is the direction you should cut this with this craft paper in this direction of the grain. Okay, hope you, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I have other videos also explaining about direction of the grain. So it's important that your, the direction of the grain, your chipboard and your craft paper be all uh, parallel with the spine. Okay, very good. So now that I have this here, you're gonna fold this over and now I'm gonna be using my tools to know exactly what is the space that I need right now. In my case, okay, as I'm planning to use with uh, the notepad cover, notepad, I keep saying notepad cover because it's, sorry, when I say notepad cover, most of the time it's just notepad, okay? Okay, so here I'm gonna use the notepad and here I'm gonna have the magnet. This is what I'm gonna, this the plan for the project. So I will put both of my tools together. It, this will give me, let me tell you, this is three quarters and this is three eighths, like nine millimeters and that. So here it's about, about three centimeters or about one inch and one eighth. Okay, about one inch in a way. So if you don't have any tools to do this, you can simply measure, okay, and mark, make a line, and then you come over there and glue. That's why I love spacers so much. We don't need to keep, you know, measuring, making lines and straight. 
trying to be if it is really straight when I have spacers that is right I can just put set like this in my table and I know it's a straight and neat then my piece here will be right so this is any ruler or uh, here I'm using the 15 and here I'm using the 9 with the 2 in 1 that is 3 quarters so I'm having the space I, I want and then I just spread the glue on the other piece number one Okay, not that much, just, oops, sorry guys, I did exaggerate here. So I spread the glue again in the uh, long piece of, long edge of piece number one, and just glue right there. So in this way, when we do covers, this is what we do. So I'm sure when I have my spacers in T, I know I have this straight in it, okay? And I have the space I want. Uh, standard and uniform all over okay but again if you don't have the cartonage tools if you don't have the spacers just measure here as I said I did one inch and one eight measure make a line and then just make sure put something here on top so you know it's a straight in it good so now that I did that it's time for us to trim this extra and for that let me use my craft knife and I use also my spacer just to make sure that I'm cutting straight in it but I need to cut this really just remove the extra we always have extra because it's easier to glue and uh, it's more comfortable to glue when you have extra net right and then you just cut that and that's what I need good well so this is basically the cover I didn't put my, my tools in place here. Yeah, good. So this is actually the outside cover of my notepad, right? My notepad cover. So what is the fabric you want to glue it now, right? And it's ready to be applied glue. So here's something that is very important. You can see here that I have my gap, right? So two pieces of chipboard, craft paper only in the middle, and I see the gaps very well. So this is the front. Here is where I'm going to be applying the fabric. So if I flip this over, you see that we have the long piece of craft paper. It's all, you know, that way. So this is the back. This is not the front. This, I will not apply glue to this part and fabric to this part. It will not be uh, good finishing with this extra craft paper. So this is the part that we're going to be using, right? So now choose your fabric. Right? I'm going to use, as I said, the passion fruit from uh, Sea Lemon, Jennifer, beautiful and fun fabric, okay? So this is the one uh, I will be using. So you cut a little bit bigger, actually, let me see, it's more than a little bit. I usually do three quarters to one inch bigger around, okay? Don't need to be. Here is something important. You don't need to cut very straight in it and you need, don't need to really measure, you know, I know for the quilters out there, you know, cartonage is also fun because of that. You don't need to be very precise when we are cutting fabric. You know why? Because we have to be precise when you cut the chipboard and the poster board and now the papers. Because if the papers are straight in it, will be all right following our method, okay? So don't stress out really cutting, uh, straightening the fabric now because we need to glue and it may move a little bit. So if you really spend your time focusing in cutting, straightening the fabric before, you know, you have to trim a little bit later as well. So that's, that's the reason you don't need to really take care now. Just cut bigger. Look at that and cut like three quarters to one inch bigger. And I receive lots of questions. This question I receive all the time. Do I need to wash my fabric? Do I need to iron my fabric before doing cartonage? Here's my question. Here's my answer. No, no, <laughs> you don't need. Take a look here. You don't need to wash. You don't need to iron. I'm going to do this project. I'm starting exactly as it is, as it was here in my drawer. And you'll see that will be wonderful at the end okay so the process of gluing fabric i will share with you now will take care of these wrinkles and will be very good okay so let's go nice so now i need space here to apply the glue hopefully we can see out in the camera because this is a big project right <laughs> 
Very good. So now let's go and we start applying glue right here in this part, only one part of the cover. Again, we are here in this part with the gap. I forgot to do something important here, so let me share. Once you are starting and gluing, using glue to the roller to the first time, important that you put some glue on your tray, right? And then you roll your roller like this. So that helps, you know, you to have glue in the surface on your roller. So when you start applying the glue here, it will go smoothly, okay? So you will not just put that or simply pick a brush and do, we need the brush, we need the, the, the roller so the glue will be a thin layer it will not pass through the fabric, right? And your project will be very good at the end without any thermal paper or adhesive or any other thing that you have to put on the back of the fabric to avoid anything. No, it's simple like this. You just use your roller, spread the glue very well, okay? And follow me. Nice. So I also apply glue a little bit here in the spine right now. The way I like to do is always applying glue to one side of the cover and the spine, right? So then you go and spread. If you notice we are starting, if you notice that you don't have enough glue, just put a little bit more, but not spend a lot of time here because it may start drying, especially now in the winter. Spread here as well. I like to do this on the two uh, sides of the gap or even apply your brush to make sure that you have glue also in the edge of the chipboard here. Okay, so once you have this, a thin layer all over, okay, you go right in the position you want. Leave at least, let me show you here leave at least half an inch or three quarters here okay on the edges and then just put it like this flip over and now you start working with your hands and that's what i was gonna like take a look at here it's gonna smooth out this fabric also all the wrinkles you can go with your hands you can go a little bit after doing with your hands you can go with a spatula and now it's very important you come in this direction <laughs> find the gap and press 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 very well here so you mark and you know it's well glue and then you go to the other edge and also press very tight so you can see that it's very well glue if you happen to have a bone folder, you can also help with the bone folder right here, right in the middle. So it is very well glued, okay? So we have this fabric very well attached to the cardboard right here. You don't see any, any glue around because it's very, it was just enough glue and you spread very well with your roller, okay? That's the great, wonderful tip. And now just fold your fabric like this. If for some reason it's already glue, you want glue a little bit because you just want here to see the edge. And now we're gonna finish right here. Very simple. Okay, go ahead. And same thing, hold your project in position. You see I'm, I'm spreading the glue here over my, my scrap of paper, right? So I'm not messing my table. It's important to also have with you sort of a scrap of cloth so you can clean your hands. So again, we have a thin layer all over. Check and make sure that you have all over, okay? That's why you go in the scrap of paper and then you just fold over here and go. You start here and go smoothly, you know, and gentle, gentle. I love to say to my students, go gentle over this fabric and work with your hands because also our hands are a little warm, right? And this helps with the glue and helps smooth the fabric and everything. So see where are the wrinkles? I don't have any more, right? That's so nice. And you can also go with your bone folder on top if you want, or you can use your plastic spatula if you want and do that, right? Oh, that's a beautiful fabric. 
very beautiful, Jennifer. I love it. <laughs> okay, so now we have with the outside ready. So here's how my cover will be soon. Now what I need to do is to uh, fold all the sides, right? And uh, have this well done. As I said, I don't really care in the beginning because now I can trim to the size that I need on the sides, right? For this, I'm gonna use my two-in-one tool. You, if you don't have that, you can use any other uh, ruler we have. And you can trim this to three quarters uh, of an inch around, okay? So I just go and make sure that I'm trimming this so I know I have like a good uh, standard side around. If you don't want to really measure, you can also just go and cut freely, but I know people like the um, doing that. And with the two-in-one, we also have to cut corners of this project. So let, let me trim this side. Let me trim this side first, and then uh, we will work on this corner uh, just to make sure uh, it's all well done. Okay. I think what I need to change is my blade, right? <laughs> it's just <laughs> not cutting straight and quick. Okay, and I use this rotary cutter just because I have some problem in my wrist as I always had, right? But uh, any rotary cutter you have will work. Very good, so now let's work with this corner, right? So when I will, in a minute, glue this and this to have a good finishing, I will have extra fabric on the corner. And I need to get, you know, rid of this because I will not have a good finishing. So how can I do that? I will share with you the best way first, <laughs> and then I will share uh, how you can do if you don't have it, okay? So the best way of cutting this is using the corner tools because they are exactly designed for that. The corner tools we have are stainless steel, so you're gonna have forever, <laughs> right? And then you just put right in the corner and cut, okay? So now I have exactly what I need for in a minute when I do this process, I will have a great and perfect corner and I will always have because it's a standard and it will be the same in all the corners, okay? So I will keep doing and trimming this and cutting my corners and I will share with you in the last one, okay? How you do if you don't have it, right? Because if you don't have this tool, what you can do is just use scissor. You just need to be patient and know that you will not, probably not have all your corners exactly perfect, right? But that's how you raise. Okay, nice. So let me cut some of them again. So you put right on the corner and go and cut. Go and cut. Cut. Right on the corner and cut. If you are not using the big one, the small one is exactly the same. But I really like the trim one because then we can go ahead and, you know, do everything at the same time. And I don't need to kind of worry about, right? But for the small one, you maybe have the small one that I, it's, you know, my oldest tool. You just put right there on the corner and cut. And this is exactly the same. So, if you don't have it, what do you do? Now I have a big scissor. <laughs> Pick a scissor and then you're gonna trim this how you do exactly to get this. So it is 45 degrees and this distance from the chipboard to the beginning of the cut, it's about three millimeters. So it's about the thickness of the paper you are working, right? But then you just go try to do 45 degrees and try to be, you know, as much close to that as you can, right? So don't like, don't do it because you don't have the tool. This tool is so functional, you know, have so many grill reviews, so you can definitely, I do recommend using. So it's not just cutting. I will give you now all the, I, all the tips to have a good corner if after cutting, <laughs> okay, we start now spreading the glue. I like to start spreading the glue on the long edge, okay? So you go all the way, spread this glue. I do, I like to do, uh, okay, so this is 
here you spread the glue on the cardboard okay and then it's very important you also have to spread the glue right here in this corner that where we left that little bit of fabric on both sides there and also here okay why? Because now we need to glue that part and this part is very important. So now you put under your spatula or something you have a, like this, under your project, okay, complete under and start bringing this very tight, okay? This is one of the good secrets of having a good corner. You have to bring it, this fabric, very tight. Nice. Very good. So once you do that, pick your spatula in this position, horizontal, and go there and press right there. I'm really on the side. And I like this fabric a lot. See, you can see very well there that it's doing. Okay? So you press down and it glue there in that corner. Press and it glue very well there. So you press down and you have right there this uh, part. So we are kind of covering a little bit of the edge of this chipboard and then you go the other side right and then you just repeat so fab glue all over the long edge glue on this part okay and glue also oh, sorry on this part right here good so now you put under and you bring tight here in the center, you're gonna work a little bit with your hands to make sure it's in the position because we kind of have more fabric than space, okay? So just do it. We're gonna cover this center in a minute, okay? So you'll not see there, but work with your hands to do your best. And now here, you press down, go to the other side, and you also press down, okay? Nice. So now, let's finish this. Okay, so now that you apply the glue, on the both sides and you cover there is part time to glue these short ones so i don't go with glue on top of this fabric i just go with the glue here on the chipboard right on this chipboard and then i spread the glue right here and right here just on the back of the fabric just on the edges so once i put my spatula under and bring tight Okay, I will have a wonderful, perfect corner, right? And it is well glued, and I'm not messing with glue around. So, this is the cloth. You can clean your spatula many times, so you make sure you are not moving glue over your project, okay? So, let me share here how we have our corner so far. Nice, right? Very good. So, let me finish the other one. I don't know if I mentioned, but the chipboard that we are using in our projects, it is uh, 100 points. This is the thickness of the chipboard, okay? Uh, you could do with 80, 85, or 90, I think so. Less, I don't recommend this kind of big project. Now, glue a key here again, and glue here, right? In all my do-it-yourself kits, I use 100 points, so it's really sturdy, right? And it's so nice. Uh, lots of people like knocking the process. Huh? Is this wood? No, this is paper. This is chipboard, right? But it's so thick and well done that looks like. Oh, very nice. Look at this, right? Fantastic. So you see how it's simple applying glue? You just use glue and fabric and cardboard, no extra pieces, no extra iron or extra anything. <laughs> and works absolutely fantastic. Okay? So now we need to prepare the piece for the center. Okay? Because let me show here in this one. Uh, we need to cover the, is the spine of my project. Let me remove this so we can see the details only of the project, right? So that we did is here, right? So now I need to cover just the inside. And for this, I'm gonna use the other craft paper that is bigger, okay? And, uh, but during the process, while I'm doing that, I don't want this to dry, like, how can I say, and bend, because this is a big piece and uh, we apply glue over. 
So if you look at the side, it's a little bend a little bit. So how you do that? Now put this aside. I have to show here, but you put it in a table aside you and you put your heavy books on top. Okay, so this is how this piece will start drying and stay flat. Okay, so I put this right there and I will come back and then we can continue making this fine. Okay, okay, I'm back. So let's do it. This craft paper is bigger than what we need okay and it's just to facilitate our process now you will need your pieces number two just for us to have one idea about this size okay because piece number this craft paper needs to be trimmed to the uh, to a little smaller than that that craft paper so I what I usually do to be very sincere with you I put on top like this Okay, on top of the, try to be, because I don't know if this is really straight or not. Okay, we can take care of this in a minute. But the, the important thing is that you put on top, I kind of make a mark here with my uh, pen. Okay, then I know this is exactly the same size as piece number two. Okay, but actually what I want is a little smaller because then my finishing will be better. So what I do once I cut, I pick a transparent, like a clear spacer or something. And then I go and I cut like a, I'd say 1 16 of an inch or two millimeters smaller than that line that I made, right? So then I know I'm kind of straight and I'm little smaller than what I do, uh, what I need. So that is, that is better. And you see at the, yes, so you can see here, it's just kind of 1 16 of an inch smaller each side. Okay, two millimeters, let's say. That's good, then uh, at the end, our finish will be better. Okay, trust me. <laughs> so now I don't really need piece number two. We are just piece, using this piece now. And I would say, if you want to follow my design here, I would say use the, the same fabric you use for the outside, use now here inside. I think that's, that's the best, you know, coordination of fabrics that we can use, okay? Okay, so now, as I said, the same fabric and you're gonna cut it just a little bigger on the sides, just, it can, it can be the same size or just a little, doesn't matter. What is important that you have a, a, like half an inch on the top and bottom so you will be able to fold and have a good finishing on this one, okay? So let's do it. This is very quick. We're gonna finish it very soon this part. So just spread the glue on this craft paper that you cut already, you know, to the side that you need. And then you just size that you need, right? And then spread the glue. Of course, this is craft paper, so hold a little bit, right? It's thin. Clean your fingers all the time, then you notice that you have glue that helps not to mess your project. And then pick your craft paper and simply glue on the back of your, of your fabric, right? Well, as you plan to do. Flip over, go with your hands, same stuff, right? Good. So now let's go and fold these two uh, short edges, which are top and bottom. So I didn't mention, but if your fabric has direction, take a look at this kind of stuff. So this is in this, in this direction. So take a look at this if your fabric has direction. So sometimes if you are studying, I do recommend not to mess up with directional fabric because it, it does like add some stress to your life if you are doing it. But you know, we can, with practice, it's all nice. Okay, so this is what I need to cover inside of how, um, our spine. Let me tell you, if you, if you are using a very light fabric, what's happened is that this craft paper can make it a little bit more dark. So it's up to you if you want to change the craft paper for like construction paper, 
white construction paper, you can do it and then you have a back paper that is white on the back that could be uh, brighten your fabric more. So it's always one option when we are doing with fabric, okay? Okay, so now let me pick this, what I have. If you have direction again, so make sure that you see, or even if you don't have direction, but you have, for example, oh, I want this part on the cover, or I want this one on the top, I want this one here at the front. So this is what I'm, I will be doing. And this is where we will be gluing like your uh, spine, okay? So this is the inside finishing covering the spine, okay? So let's do it. Once you have it, you know that it's smaller, right, than this piece, and even a little smaller than the piece number two that we will be covering and gluing here in a minute, right? Okay. So now put it there and spread, spread the glue here. Okay, so spread very well, okay? Even here on the this part here that I don't know if you can see in the, fa in the video very well, okay? I, you need this part, you need to have you know, all glue there. So you come over here, once you have it, glue all over it, and you can even put a little bit more than before now. Then you come over here, find the position and the center, right? I like kind of, there are some ways of you glue this in the best way. You can put it right there, and if you have a bone folder or your spatula, make sure you find your and, and press here well, and then you glue the sides, okay? Or you start gluing one side, and then you come right here, and then you go there and glue. The, the intention here is that you can have this very well glue. And another thing that I like to do is kind of holding here, okay? And making sure that you are kind of rounding this, because at the end, the final result of this will be round. And then you put a masking tape right here. Just in, it can be just in the middle or it can be more, but I, I kind of like more in, just here in the middle and press because we are gluing fabric with fabric and it will take some time to glue, to, to dry and to be well connected. So during this time, this masking tape help those pieces to be together, okay? So make sure kind of you do this with your project so you know that you are allowing it to be rounded. Okay, good. And then finish pressing and now again you put back to your heavy books. Okay, so let me see my heavy books. I will put there one heavy book here, another here. Then this will make this piece to dry flat and neat, okay? During the time we will be start making the inside finishing, okay? So, this is here now and uh, I put this aside and I will be back with making the inside finishing, okay? Okay, so now let's see how to do the inside finishing, okay? And here start our options, okay? So let me share, let me show you here in my table what we can do. Okay, first of all, those two pieces you need, you know, it does not matter how you do the, the inside finishing, you need the big ones. So this is poster board, it's a white board, you know, those that are used like in schools and, and something like this. So uh, you can use this um, with the coordinating fabrics and you cut your fabric about half an inch to three quarters bigger of this and this. So we have two because we have two sides of our inside finishing, right? Okay, so then uh, I will go ahead and share a little bit uh, about the pocket because if you want to do this version here that is the simple one, like the basic version that we have the pocket to put the notepad in another pocket to put uh, your notes and you want to do just like that without the magnet on the other side, if you don't want the magnet, then you will need the two pieces, number three as well. So pieces two are the big ones, pieces three will be the pockets. 
So if you want to do that, in my case, I will only use one because I will do pocket one side and magnet bar in the other, okay? So the pocket, you choose your coordinating fabric to have to be more beautiful, right? So sure. And then you cut your fabric like three quarters bigger as well, okay? And one of them, one of them you will be saving for later, okay? You will be saving for later because we will use for the part with the magnets and we have one more step to do prior to glue the fabric on, okay? Okay, so now one you save like this for later and now with the other one we're gonna see how to do it. So now let's get, get gluing those pieces here and this is my piece number two. Hey, I hope you can see, but I'm spreading here all oh, around. Maybe I change my camera to the other side. It's going to be better, right? Okay, spread the glue all over, okay? Just spread the glue very well. A thin layer all over. Now it's white, so we kind of don't see. But if you look through the light, you can see that you have all over. And then you just put right on your fabric, on the back of your fabric again. Go in this side, flip over and go with your hands and spread very well. Like smooth very well. So in this way, your, um, your piece will be well done. Well, poster board is thin, right? So once you glue it, you notice that will be <laughs> bent, right? So what you do, you put under your mat for a bit while you do the next piece. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna glue also the, the piece for the pocket. Then it has time to dry flat. Okay, so you spread the glue right here on the same thing on piece number three, right? All over. And then just with there in the center or you know if you have half an inch here to fold over it's more than enough then the other side go with your hands and smooth quick okay very good so again I'm gonna like change now I'll pick the first one I did that is flat already I'm gonna put this one under my mat okay Remember you put under your mat, okay? We always we always laugh for our group in the cardinage club. Sometimes we just forget it's there and start looking all over and <laughs> we don't know where is it and it's just under our mat. Okay, so now that this is ready, it's time to finish those. So we need to also do the same thing we did to the big cover. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut the corners on all these uh, pieces. If we, ah, I didn't change the blade. Uh, if I see, like in this case, if I see that I have kind of the same of the three quarters, I can see visual, right, that is good. I don't trim around. But if I see that it's too much, like this is really a lot, then I can just go ahead and use my tool or you can use any other like ruler that you have and just trim it. Again, if you have a better blade, <laughs> will help. I just don't know where is my blade right now in the video, so let's keep doing. This is actually a lot as well. I don't want this, so I'm gonna go ahead and um, do this and trim. Okay. Uh, you know why? Let's do different. This one will be my with the one with the pocket. Okay. So usually when I do pockets, I don't want fabric on the bottom because it's where I will put my pocket. So in this case, you can just go straight with the poster board. Okay, and trim exactly there. So if you again, I'm doing this just because this will be my pocket. Okay, on top of this, I put my pocket. So if you have direction in your fabric, make sure you are cutting the bottom because here is where I put my pocket. 
okay? And if you are not adding a pocket at all, you don't cut here, you just cut corners and make the process as normal, okay? Good? So in the other one, uh, in the second one that will be for the bar, like the magnet bar, in that one we will not do this, we will just do normal corners. But uh, as I said, let's do the pocket first, okay? So this is how I do. The, so this way we don't have like a lot of volume of fabric that I don't need on the bottom because this will be covered with um, the pocket, okay? So I spread the glue on the long edge and also there on the corner, if you notice. Let's do again. Spread the glue. And then just, oops, a lot of glue, don't need that much. Okay, and then come over here and spread the glue right here in this extra fabric as well. And if you notice, I use the corner too, even for the poster board. And I always do that, okay? I will show you that sometimes in the poster board we need a little tip to make it more pretty, let's say. <laughs> but it's absolutely functional and uh, works perfectly. So you do the same thing here on the poster board, also there and there. Same thing we did on the big cover, right? But under bring type, but under bring type. Okay, yes, now I, I can share my tip for poster board. So when I look here on the front in the poster board, because poster board is thinner than the chipboard, right? So when you look right here, I can see that we have a little extra fabric. That does not happen all the time. That does not. It depends on the fabric. It depends the way we glue there. But sometimes we have. So when I see this, I just come with my scissor and quickly trim this right this. And it's done. It's beautiful. It's perfect. And I, I have all beautiful and standard. Okay, so I just cut that little extra pour pine point, okay, that was bothering me. Especially because poster board, I will not see this because I will glue down. The only thing I see on poster board is the front. So when I see it's perfect, wonderful, okay? So this is good for that. Let me put aside or I put under my mat again. Remember that, please. <laughs> And then let's work with the pocket a little bit. So this is my pocket. I want it to be, I want it to be, let's see. Let's do this, this position. So if this is the top, I'm gonna spread the glue. I don't cut corners now, take a look. I'm just spreading this, this glue very well. And you go with the glue also over there and over here, okay? Then put under and bring tight, put under, bring tight, and also glue this fabric right here on the sides. Okay, very good. So here for pockets, uh, what is it very important, and you notice that this is very well glue. You cannot have fabric without being glue here because we'll put something inside, right? So this is the pocket. So. If you prefer, you can simply like glue a piece of, let me cut very quick here. Sometimes I do that, sometimes no. If you want to, just make sure that you want to protect this pocket, this part of the pocket very well. You can just make sure it's smaller than the paper. Yes. Just a piece of copy paper, random copy paper that you have at home. Just spread very well like this. And then you glue on top of this edge, but you uh, you don't want to see this on the front, right? This is just like a, a protection inside this pocket. So you know that once you are sliding your notepad, your notes, okay? This fabric will stay there, will not be unglued, okay? But it's not, I'd say this is optional, okay? I have done without for a long time and works fine since if you are make sure that all the fabric is well glued, it will be good. So now this is where we have to now cut corners. And again, if you 
Uh, don't have the tool. Come back to this. Uh, go back to this video and find in the beginning how I was using the scissors to cut. Right? Just do the same. Okay, now I cut corners here and I have my top well glue, right? So this is the pocket. Now pick your piece here that is done, right? The first one that you did. You cut straight with the, the poster board on the bottom. So it's unfinished here. Here it's good, finished, right? So what do you do? You put this pocket in this position over your table, right? Put it right there. And then you come with this one exactly where you need to do and go on top and match the corners of the pocket. Okay? So you just put there, match the corners, right? Very well. And then we're gonna be folding this over that. Now, an important tip. If this pocket is just to put the notepad, to slide the notepad, this is right enough. If you are planning to have something a little bit more thick, like inside this pocket, like you can put something a little thick, like a cereal, a piece of cereal box, or another piece of chipboard, or another piece of poster board, something in between, like a sandwich. Here, in between. Put something, making some volume, and this, that, and then you do this. I don't like, let's say, oh, I have here. Let's say this, okay, but thinking of something a little thicker and smaller, you put right here and put this, right? So you are kind of saving space in the pocket. So once it's done, you can put something more thick inside. The way we are doing here, I'm planning just to put a few notes or the notepad. So you don't need anything. It works fine like this. So now you spread the glue over this part and on the corner is always like having corners is always square corners it's always the same right we spread glue there put the glue on the corner press down right it's uh, this is the method of having a great corner you cut well with the the tool then we spread the glue and spread the glue also there on this part right fold over and press down on this corner. Okay, so those are the steps. And then you glue the bottom, right? Same thing, same thing. There and there. Good. And then put under, bring tight. Put under, bring tight. Nice, nice. Oh, so beautiful, so beautiful. I really like this. Uh, contrasting between the dark fabric, right, and the passion fruit. Very nice. Okay, so here I have my pocket, okay, where I will put the notepad lid. Okay, so now, very important, if you are doing your notepad exactly as this one, just with, let me remove this now, so we can be better, Exactly as this one, here I have a pocket, <laughs> okay? I use the same fabric, you barely can see, but I have a pocket. So if you are doing pocket and pocket, you just repeat the same for the other one. You have another piece two, another piece three, repeat. And then you'll be ready to, in a minute, I will, where I share how to finish, you will do it, okay? So in, this is for you if you want to do two pockets. If you want to do one pocket and the other side, and the other side with the magnet, okay? So keep this aside, keep this aside, and now we're gonna work with the, uh, with the magnet bar. Okay, so now remember that piece that we saved for now? Okay, so that's the piece we're gonna be using for the part with the magnet. This is what we need. We, what else we're gonna need? You also need piece number four, that is, we also need piece number four, that is a chipboard, and piece number five, okay? So what they are like this, the outside and inside of this bar that we'll be gluing and putting right here, right? So obviously we need to fix the magnets first. <laughs> and then you need also a piece of craft paper that is inside the kit for piece number four. 
And you need a piece of copy paper, right? For the piece number five. Okay, so now let's see how to do it. And of course, fabric for them, right? So I will do for piece number four, that is the chipboard, I will do the coordinating one. And for the inside, I will do the black, one, the dark one, but you can, you know, choose and do whatever you want. Okay, so now, first of all, let's start working with the magnet first, because we first need to apply magnet to this piece to then uh, cover with fabric, okay? I have tried to put the magnet inside the chipboard, so we will not kind of feel it. But as we have the post board and everything, it's, it's a lot of things and the magnet does not work very well. Unless you have a, a stronger magnet than myself, but this is pretty much stronger. So I, for myself, I decide to do like that and I think that's the best way of doing it, okay? And it's easiest, easiest, easiest also, right? Okay, so now, first of all, we need to find the position for the magnets. And it kind of doesn't really, really matter because we will um, match the position in the second one. But I, the ones I did so far, and I like it, is about, I measured, okay, so I measured about three centimeters from the top, right, from the top of my poster board, uh, three centimeters and three centimeters, right? And then I did about four and a half from the, from the side, right? Four and a half centimeters from the side. You know, if you are with me for my time, you know that in cartonage is so easy to do centimeters. So, you know, we just go, but it can be like one and three quarters from the beginning of your, of your paper and about uh, one inch and one eight from the top, okay? Just to, to have a position. Okay, so now we have the four pieces here, right? And, um, well, magnets, if you know, they are a little kind of, let's say, tricky, okay? So the position, you glue the first ones here. For the second, we will need to know that we are, you know, in the right position, so they stay connected and not right repeal each other right so the first two ones you basically just pick two right and keep the other two on the side and then you um ma where you mark it you just go i look as i said i like to use glue or uh, super glue for that because then it glues like quickly and i know let, let me remove this fabric from the back. So where I make my point right here is where I want to glue my... my. So it's just a little bit, uh, you cannot see in the camera, but it's just like a, a little pointy of glue. And then you go and just put on top and glue. It doesn't really matter if it moves a little bit because as I said, we're gonna be matching the position of the other one with this one here. Okay, so it's just a little bit of glue and you put that on top. Okay, press a little bit, hold just for a minute, it will glue in position. Okay, good. For this is the first step. Nice, okay. Okay, and then we have this fabric to glue on top okay so now the process is exactly the same you i will keep here because of the video but you can wait a little bit more till you make sure that this is like more glue <laughs> in position because we will apply glue on top of this magnet and we need to glue on the fabric okay so wait at least five minutes at home that will uh, help you right to make sure that will be well glued and then you go all the way with this right i will try to be very careful here but I, I will spread the glue also on top of the magnet okay can you see mine is glue already nice so spread very nice spread very nice then now i have here my fabric but uh glue put this on the back of your fabric okay and i will kind of be very gentle and flip already and then you go here with your hands 
exactly on top, can be with your hands or with your spatula. I want you to make sure you press very well around. So these magnets, uh, it's, it's really dark, I'm not sure you see, and then you glue the rest, okay? Don't spend a lot of time, but make sure it is all glue. Okay, hope you can see, yes, you can see here. So you go around and press and mark very well that magnet, so it is well glued in position, okay? Here is important to give you a, 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 a tip, so, if doing this make you don't glue well the rest, sometimes you can try, not a lot, but if you can, you see, it didn't glue, the glue has dry a little bit, so I can do this, but if you cannot do this, uh, you can go with, it's better actually, but I don't have here iron, if you just go on top of this part that is already right in position and you put your eye on that, it will glue in place, okay? I'm trying to solve here just because I took a little bit <coughs> more time here to explain how to do that and then the glue dry on the rest, okay? So I could have just iron on top and because of the heat, it will glue in place, right? Okay, so now that I have my magnets in place, I can simply go ahead and finish this piece. And then uh, how you do that, just simply cutting the corners first, right? And then finishing our route. Here is too big. Let me trim this. Okay. Hope you are enjoying the process, right? It's, it's fun. Good. very good nice so now let's finish this and we're gonna finish this the same way we did already so many times okay so I will speed up a little bit <laughs> but you spread the glue on the long edge also here on the corners don't forget right and then bring tight and press on the corners and then here right and here and then keep going okay keep going So now we'll do exactly the same as I, I showed you before. Uh, if we have any extra pointy fabric here, you see on the front, I simply go and cut like this, just the fabric that is on the back, right? That is extra. Yeah, this fabric happened this for our, this one now. Okay, yeah, as I said, not our corners, not our fabrics need to do that. Okay, so here I have my, uh, one another one of the finishing with the magnets here right so what i need to do now is do the bar that goes on top and apply the magnets there as well okay so let me share here with you very quick how to do it so here we need piece number five we start everything with piece number actually piece number four Piece number four with the craft paper, okay? So now we will, this craft paper you should, you receive in the kit as well, okay? Uh, and in case you are doing this for any other project, you know, applying the same concept, this craft paper is a little bigger right here in the high of piece number four. And this, uh, this direction of grain is like this, okay? This is the direction of the grain because I want to fold this on the back, you know, and create it. This is absolutely too big. I don't need all this craft paper, right? So you can just come here straight. You don't need to be really straight in it. You can, if you want, you can. For example, let me share how you can do it. 
you can put this right here if you need something to cut straight okay you can do this but actually I will be uh, here is that I said it's too big I'm gonna cut so at this point if you have let me see because I'm I'm a lot visual right this is about one in a, one three quarters okay so this you don't need more than this we this is what I need to fold over like on the back of that part okay so this is the top okay piece number four and then piece number five will be the inside okay and also I would use that piece of copy paper uh, to actually help me to be very sincere with you sometimes I just glue the fabric directly I don't put the copy paper but I feel more comfortable when I do the copy paper I feel that it's more the finishing is better so I think it's worth it, you know <laughs> doing the copy paper but here actually we need also just a little bit and on the side here I'm gonna cut as well Okay, so trim it to be, uh, you don't want it to be bigger than this, so this is what we're going to be putting then, right? In a minute they will be this and this. So here then, it's almost the same, can be a little smaller, that, that's fine, okay? I can see that I need to still, let me pick a scissor here, still trim a little bit here of this craft paper. Okay, good, nice. So now let's plan the fabric. So this is the fabric that will be, and this is a little tricky. This is a little tricky, so uh, pay attention now because this is the only part that may confuse us because uh, the way it goes, okay? So take a look at how the fabric needs to be placed here and also how to apply the magnet, okay? Pay attention now. Okay, so this is the part that goes, this is the, the outside part, and this is not like this, right? You see, this is how we're going to be doing, and this will fold over right here. So when you are thinking about your fabric, remember that you have to have the more extra fabric, like say, on the top. So it's kind of unusual, <laughs> right, for our cartonage, but this is how we do. Okay, so this is how, this is the direction of the fabric, because once you glue and do your stuff, this is how you will see, okay? Very good. So now, uh, and, and before I go even further, let me explain for you that I, I did two options in this one. And this, first, I glue... I don't glue, I didn't glue the, the, the magnet to the poster board. I insert them inside the chipboard, right? What I feel is it is okay, but I do prefer the second one that I did, where I did everything on the poster board, okay? So you can really see that I have the two magnets here. It's way, you can see, you can even listen to this. It's way more strong when you have them more together because I only have a thin layer of fabric on both of them. So it stays closer better in this way, okay? So, uh, well, so that's what I will do. So let's go ahead and finish the outside first. And then when you go to the uh, poster board, we first add the magnets. Good. So now here is piece number four. You just spread your glue very well to all of this part. Whoops. All of this part, including here. Right. And then remember that I don't know what is the position you want. <clears throat> Where you mostly see is here. And then flip over and here you don't need to have it's good that you don't have the fabric all over this paper it could be even a little smaller because that's where uh, we will be gluing on the back so you don't need all this fabric here okay now let's do this part that is uh, cutting corners it's almost too too short in fabric <laughs> 
I could have put more on the top because yeah, I always like to have at least half an inch. I don't have half an inch here, but well, I'll make it work, <laughs> okay? Okay, so then spread the glue there. Come over here, press down. And then you go to the other one. Oops, repeat, right, to the other side. And bring tight, press down. Okay, and then here. So you see that we use the brush sometimes and sometimes we use the, the roller, right? Sometimes uh, people ask me uh, what is the tray that I use here in mine. It's a tray that I bought a long time in, with a set of roller paint. But those roller paint I don't use anymore but I keep using the tray. But you know, you don't need that, exactly that. You know those kind of frozen food and things like that that comes with uh, some uh, plastic balls? Yeah, you can use anything, anything. Good, very good. So now let's see how to... Um, now that we have this part ready, let's see how to find the position for the magnet and then finish the other one, okay? Good. So the way I like to do this is uh, I put my uh, my piece like it's like this, not the part that you glue the copy paper. It's the other one that goes in touch here, right? So find the position for it, like aligning here in the beginning. Okay, so this is here aligning in the beginning. So this poster board is aligned with the beginning of the chipboard. Okay, this is the position you will be gluing this pretty soon. Okay, and then put masking tape just to secure this in place. So when you go and find the position for the magnet, this does not go uh, like anywhere, right? Stay in position. So now what I'm going to be doing, you have to pick your other magnets. You have two more magnets here, right? And find them, put them on top of them of the other ones, right? Because one side will stay connected, the other side will repeal. So you have to make sure that is correct. And now you need to have a Sharpie. I like the Sharpie. So you know that this is where you will glue here on the top. There, okay? And most important, don't miss them up. For example, don't glue this here and this that because it may not work depending on the position you glue the first ones. So know that this is for here and this is for that. Okay? Good. But first, we need to up put to find the position, right? And how do I find the position? Uh, the way I like to find position for magnets, I put a little bit of glue on top of the magnet like this, okay, here and here, just a little bit of glue on top of this magnet, and then I come with this part, and I align, now we're gonna align this beginning, sort of, not really, really aligning with the top, you can do a little less, so the other part goes on uh, the, like this, so I have to say about a millimeter or so to back okay to the, the the back like it's not really aligning i i do a little down and then press press here you don't want to actually glue them together but once you do this okay you can see, really see you may don't see in the video but i see yeah you can see very well where is the position for those magnets okay good so now that you have the position, keep the, the way... I, why I'm so careful here? Because I did wrong and I have to open because the magnets mess up between them because we have four of them, right? So that's why I'm being so careful here, right? So now you simply go ahead. Don't. This is the, the position. So this goes there and this goes there. No problem. So put a little bit of the super glue 
right there. Okay. Then you remove this and, <laughs> and glue there. Okay. So now this part with the mark that was up, that one goes down on the poster board. Okay. So the part that is up there is the clean part. The one that was touching here, because then after when I do that, it will work. Right. Hope this makes sense. So in the other one, the same thing, put a little bit of super glue there. Okay. Then here you pick there and the part that goes, that part that mark it, that we put the glue, this part goes down right there and you glue there. Okay. Press. Okay, we are done now. We know that we are exactly in the position I need. And I also have the what is most important. We have the uh, magnet that we work. Okay, because one of those that I made, I didn't take really care about it. And at the end, I messed up. I changed the positions and did not stay together again. So it was really, really like frustrating when we got to that place and oh my gosh, and how, what can I do now, right? Okay, so now that we have this, now that we have this, we're gonna be just gluing this part right here, okay? Nice. So this is the part, again, if you, I would say don't pick a fabric with, you know, direction for this, <laughs> that can be, drive you a little crazy. So the, it, it's inside, like I would say, no one will see, and you don't need to stress out for that. But if you are using something with direction, oh, I, I, this fabric is too big, guys, sorry. Okay, I will cut just, yes, I could have done it smaller. So here, do the same, okay? Go with your fingers or with your spatula. I just want you to make sure uh, sometimes we need to unglue a little bit just to make sure that you are gluing them very well, okay, around. So now I have here my magnets glue in place. Hope you can see there, right? And now we're going to be finishing this. So here in the poster board on the top, we'll do the same, like cutting here. Okay, and I go ahead already and trim this on the bottom on the bottom because I don't this is too much. Really too much. Okay, so let me change this paper now pretty quick, or at least fold it here so we can continue in a paper that's more clean. Right? And then I will do exactly what we did prior, right? Press now and press down. Okay, and then the last part that is simply going here. Very good. So now I need to glue them together like this, okay? Okay, so now I'm spread the glue all over. I'm gonna spread the glue all over here, right? And then I glue them on top of the other part, right? So it doesn't matter the size that you are doing because we can do that for other projects. You just do this finishing a little smaller, right, than the other one. And now you remember the position that you planned before, right? So we were aligning the poster board with the chipboard. That, that was what we did. And on this, on the, uh, on the width, you center. Okay, so align poster board with the chipboard here. In other words, if you do this, they will be aligned, okay? And then you center on the high, on the width, and then you put masking tapes, 
okay? Because those masking tapes will allow, okay, this, these pieces to glue, to stay connected, to stay glued together. You don't go though, you don't go with, with masking tape here on the bottom where we have the craft paper and the post and the copy paper because you just press because we will uh, finish on the other side right and then you don't want it the masking tape here right so let's finish this pretty quick <laughs> okay this is just ready as need to go now when you do that look at the magic yeah right it stays connected and now let me tell you this is all wet so it does not connect very well right now the best connection will happen after it is um, dry good so now put in position magnet with magnet fold this over and then you're gonna come with this here on the back and just make sure that you are gluing applying this glue just don't try not to mess with the front okay let's go that let me see if you mess with the other part as i did just clean a little bit right and then you fold over okay fold over this in glue okay you don't need to put any masking tape, anything here, because it will stay very well glued, very well connected. But if you feel so for a little bit, you just don't, cannot uh, forget that if you put masking tape somewhere here, it's good to remove later. Good. Okay, perfect, right? So one more thing to do to have a good finishing. You put this in this position, uh, or in, let me do it this position because of the video, just hold okay you don't need to mess up you just need to open and hold here and then you put masking tape inside where we have the connection right because they are not they are glued together so now you can close again and it's ready okay so now we have all that we need ready for the notepad we have this uh, one of the sides with the pocket where I will put the notepad, the other side with the magnets already finished, okay? And then now we go to the next part where we put out together and just finish making this notepad cover. I hope you are enjoying, okay? And let's now finish this. Okay, so now that we have all the pieces ready, it's time to put all together and finish the notepad cover, right? Okay, so let's see. Well, now, if you are planning to have a pen holder here in the middle, so you need to have a really, like a small piece of ribbon, can be like not as wide as this one, can be uh, lots of different kinds of uh, ribbons and let me just put this all out of my way so this is the cover you see it was out under something heavy all this time so it's really flat okay so this is what we want when we work with the chipboard so now for the pen it's really up to you if you want to put my down or up you know i don't know and uh, I don't know what is the pen that you're gonna be using, so I will show you here how I usually do, and works for most of the pens. But if you have a pen that is like really specific that you want to use, it's good that you have it on hand now. But if you are doing for any kind of, like mostly, <laughs> most of the pens, just put glue right here. I'd really eyeball if you want to measure, just make sure that this is the top if you have direction, right? Or if you choose one of the parts that will be your front. And then this ribbon is about uh, four inches, okay? So I glue one part like this, right, on top of that. And the other one, I just make like a, a little, just a little bow here, like just 
a little part that it is like this. So when I will put my pen, it will work. If you have a pen that is really big, like for example, this one is a really thick pen. So it's good that you put your pen right there and you make sure that you have the space that you want. But uh, I mean, uh, it is like, it will work, I will do a little less because I don't want to use that thick pen, okay? Like this, it will work good, good. Nice, so I only have masking tape right here in this spine, so I'm okay. If you have masking tape, more space, you can remove that masking tape now because now is the time that we will be gluing this right here, okay? And the other one on the side. So, before I go any further, if you are intending, and I will do that actually before doing the, the ribbon, let me put a small piece of ribbon just to see the masking tape, just to secure a little bit because I need to move this piece. If you are just gluing the other part, you don't need it. Because if you want to do, for example, to add, to add a clip, right? So this sort of clip that I show you that you need to fix with uh, a bread or a fastener, right? I don't have the bread right here, but you know, those that will have legs that you have to open on the back. So while you do that, you have to know where is the position you want to put, like here, know the position. You're gonna use a paper all in this case, paper all, make the hole that you need, put the fastener, put the bread, open, open the legs here. I'm not doing that, right? That's why I'm not showing, but it's super simple. Open the legs here, so that will be there. The only diffi like difficulty for that is that it's it will not stay flat anymore. Once you put the clip, you have the clip on the back. So once you are gluing here, you just need to be a little bit more careful because you have this, but not a problem. You can also, if you have a screw that, are, that is small, but with a big, uh, a big uh, head, you can let this to fix at the end with a really small screw, okay? So there are some possibilities once it's ready, right? So there are some possibilities. This specific clip we have available in the shop in case you want, right? And uh, if you want to put, I think this is too big to put elastic to close and you don't need, but just in case, if you want, I have uh, several videos showing how to apply elastic to covers, right? So feel free to do it if you want. I will not do because I don't really feel that we need. So I will go ahead and now glue the two finishing, okay? Let's start with the right side, that is this pocket. And if you have two, they are exactly the same. If you choose to do two pockets, you have the same same thing to do for both sides, right? Okay, so now we spread the glue uh, over the back. And now you can spread a little, let me put myself in the other position now, just because I want really to see. You go all over, okay? Go all over. Just try not to move this piece because as you can see, you have glue around as well, right? You may need to, to do a little bit more if you feel so, right? It all depends how dry is your environment, right? And then, okay, nice. So once you have a good amount of glue all over that, clean your fingers, <laughs> pick this up, and then you go right here, and you glue exactly in the position. So you have to eyeball and center. So you can kind of um, align here, right? Let me remove now. You can kind of align here with, you know, in the beginning of this chipboard and see the rest. Make sure you can still move a little bit and then just once you are happy that is center, right? You press and then now you do need this masking tape because as I said before, fabric with fabric will not glue together right instantly in the same 
right right away so we need to help with this masking tape so they stay connected and then after dry i i, I always say uh that i really love love to to keep all my masking tape overnight and i do because i know that if it is really well dry it's better for the finishing okay now this is also another tip that is very important once you put the masking tape pick your claw or a paper towel or whatever and press very well over the masking tape this is one super important tip because then you know that once you remove this masking tape in about overnight or in at least six hours right uh then once you remove it will be out in position okay nice so this is one side now let's put the other side that goes right here right actually it's the same process right so let me just flip this over again because uh one of the the things you have to take care of when you are gluing this fabric is not put your fabric your right side of the fabric over wet glue okay because then you're gonna have some like damages you know where you see marks in your fabric and if you occasionally have fabric a glue on top of the fabric you can put a little bit of water here and then clean you know go over and clean so here you just need to be a little careful where is the position where is actually the end of this piece so i will go right here like this a little bit more careful on this part with my brush right so i know that is kind of well glue but like that and then the rest i can do exactly as i did for the other one Okay, clean your fingers and now I will need to remove this and actually move this so I can put here and you can see because it is more on the way. But same thing, a lot, take your time here, see center as you want it and I would say it's better that you align now here on the top, right? Because you don't want this to be uh, off you know uh, out of your cover okay and once it is in position you put the masking tapes on the side same thing here I will open my magnet and put the masking tape here below okay here same thing put the mag masking tape close continue putting your masking tape and also here good and then on the top and then right here on the top i will put some masking tapes like this here to there okay a few of them just to make sure that they are connected okay and then again press and press this is a big project, like a, a large project, right? Not, it's not actually, it's really, uh, you know, fun to make. It does not take time. And uh, what actually what takes time is because the pieces are larger than usual, right? Good, very good, fantastic. Look at that. We have our notepad ready, notepad cover ready okay look at this so now we can put the notepad we can put our notes or our planner or whatever we want right here and it is so pretty with this passion fruit fabric from c lemon right i really love it okay so i will also make a box coordinating uh, a box that i have done a video as well so you can check the video uh, another time if you want and just for you to see, you know, more pieces together, coordinating. I love sets with the same fabric. I think this is so good. And um, this, now, 
we need to put something heavy again, okay? Because we we put a lot of stuff here, and if you just leave it like that to dry, especially in the winter when we have this dry environment inside the houses, that can bend. So now I would, let me change here my camera again. Another thing, last thing you have to do now is put something heavy. So for this, it's better, let's say, if you haven't put your clip, but if you put the clip, just make sure you try to put some masking tapes as much as you can so it will stay flat or close if you put even better in case you put your clip on the top on the front already then you close it and put something heavy whatever you can okay try to put something inside to compensate because you see that we have a space here right and then you put there but if you just made exactly as i'm showing here you put something heavy like this and then you leave drying okay for uh at least six hours but if you can keep this overnight it's even better because then it will completely dry flat and you'll be much more happy <laughs> with the results okay so the basic project now is done hope you like it hope you enjoy and try to make more cartonage projects it's lots of fun you can use your fabrics in this different way and uh, we have lots of do-it-yourself kits available in the shop so take a look which which ones you prefer right and have lots of fun gluing fabric okay check our website colorwayarts.com and if you have any question you can always contact us at claudia at colorwayarts.com thank you so much i hope you have a wonderful day and have tons of fun gluing fabric thank you so much and i will see you another day bye bye